Hello and welcome to Southwest Magazine. I'm Vicki Hogarth and my guest today is Jesse Dunfield, a meditation coach. I couldn't actually think of anyone better to have on during the time we're living in right now, Jesse, than a meditation coach. <laughs> Thank you, Vicki. You know, I know we've been trying to do this for a while and uh, I don't I think our timing couldn't be better. Timing couldn't yeah. be better. So tell <laughs> so me, I'm here. how yeah. are you waking up every morning? I know you're a meditation coach, but these are uncharted times with the COVID-19 pandemic, and a lot of people are trying to figure out how to organize their heads and, and have mental stability. How are you keeping calm during these times? Well, you know, I have to make sure that, you know, the first thing I want to do when I get up in the morning is run to the computer and, you know, I want to check on my friends on Facebook. I want to, you know, look at the numbers, you know, which of course, you know, are alarming. Um, I want to see what's going on in the world. You know, there's such a temptation, but um, what I, you know, I resist that urge. Um, and instead, you know, I really try to start the day with meditation, which is something that I've been doing for a long mm -hmm. time. What yeah. kind of meditation would you do first thing in the morning, let's say? So I do mindfulness meditation. I've experimented with a lot of different types over the years, um, but I find mindfulness is the one that I do the most now um, and the one that really works for me. And it's also the one that I teach. What does that mean to someone who, like me, who's not much of a meditation expert at all? So mindfulness meditation is really just um, looking at your thoughts and feelings um, with non-judgmental awareness um, in the present. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to put it. Um, you know, mindfulness is such a buzzword right now. It's probably on your breakfast cereal this morning. You know, it's, it's everywhere. Um, and uh, we, are, we use the term a lot, but we don't really know what it means. Yeah. Um, so it's really about being present. It's really about being aware. Okay. So th I think those are the two, you know, things that um, are most, uh, mindful so like asking yourself like what emotions you're feeling that kind of thing what maybe your fears are or what keeps you awake at night yeah exactly so you know you want to you know when you're being mindful you're looking at um, your thoughts your feelings sensations you know anything that comes up mm -hmm. um, and instead of judging it you know we tend to have this chatter that's going on in our heads all the time um, and so instead of you know taking that seriously we want to look at it um, with non-judgmental, you know, non-judgmentally. Okay. Yeah. I should let everyone know too that at the end of the show, we're going to do a walk through meditation for, for me and for all of you at home for about five, 10 minutes. So we can all experiment with meditation with Jesse's help. But if let's say for example, anxiety, we're all probably mm -hmm. feeling a bit or a lot of that right now. How would you look at that feeling and walk yourself through, through that non-judgmentally? -judge yeah, so, you know, anxiety, I mean, is something that I've dealt with a lot in my life. Um, and that's really what brought me to meditation in the first place. So I, um, you know, I, I, anxiety is something that I think a lot of people deal with. Um, you know, I think it's a number one or number two, you know, mental health issue. Uh, and if you haven't had anxiety yourself, you know somebody that has anxiety, you know, um, you know, you have a family member perhaps, and now particularly with, you know, what's going on, um, we're seeing, you know, a real increase. It, you know, we don't really know what, what the future holds. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're seeing, a, you know, a lot of anxiety, so. Can there um, be some acceptance with that too? Sometimes I imagine, in, especially in a time like this, that we can forgive ourselves a little bit and not feel like that has to be something we have to take care of as a feeling, but, can we address it in a way that maybe eases that over time? Yes, exactly. You know, acceptance is the right word. Um, so, you know, and that's exactly what you want to do. So when you're having these anxious feelings, um, we have a tendency to not want to have them, mm -hmm. you know, and that makes sense, right? You know, we're, we're um, trained to try to ignore or deny, um, numb. You, know, <laughs> numb, <laughs> yeah. you know, exactly, you know, these kinds of feelings when they come up. And with, you know, if we bring awareness to it, um, and so if we acknowledge that we're feeling, you know, a lot of anxiety right now, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, there's something very empowering about that. There's something very, um, you know, that, that can really, being aware, mm -hmm. um, that really helps. So if you can just say, okay, I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling, uh, 
and uh, and that's okay, mm -hmm. and not being hard on ourselves, because um, we have a tendency to, you know, want to beat ourselves up and say, oh, you know, I should be like, you know, a super person right now, I shouldn't be feeling this, um, but instead just look at it, you know, and say, it's okay, um, you know, live with it, mm -hmm. experience it, realize that, you know, it will pass, you know, anxiety, all, all emotions, you know, ebb and flow, so, mm -hmm. um, I had a good friend yeah. that said that once. If you asked Did him they? how he was feeling, he was <laughs> right, like, yeah. it'll pass. <laughs> and he meant it good or bad. He's right. like, I'm happy, yeah. go away. Yeah, Changing. no, your friend really is onto something because that's really what it is. Um, yeah. Can we back up and talk a little bit about your your journey to becoming a meditation coach? What led you sure. this way? And, and how did you learn to become one? Well, you know, I, I've always been a seeker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've always been interested in, you know, self-help and um, spirituality and, you know, and I looked at, a, you know, I explored a lot of different paths over the years. Meditation was something that I tried to do and like a lot of people, you know, something that I hear a lot in my classes is, oh, I can't focus or, you know, I've tried meditation, it didn't work or, you know, I can't concentrate. Um, and I was that person too. I thought, you know, this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then just, you know, kind of in a roundabout way, you know, uh, I ended up try, like rediscovering it. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually started with a chanting meditation, so which is not what I do now, which is mm -hmm. not what I teach now, but that's how I started. And it was really good for me because it gave me something to focus on. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, you know, that mind that's always wandering, I had like something to kind of keep me, you know, in the present. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time it worked. Mm -hmm. um, and I needed it. You know, if people could see how far I had come to where I am now, um, you know, it was a total transformation. Mm -hmm. And it worked so well for me. And you know, if I can do it, I feel like anybody can. Right. So um, now I love to teach it and I love to share it with other people. Now, and, obviously you, you are teaching here in St. Andrews mm -hmm. and in Charlotte County. Yeah. Where do you teach normally when we're not sort of self-isolating as we are in the moment? <laughs> and know, and how have you managed to expand that to your, your clients at home while we're all sort of supposed to be at home? Yeah, so um, I, I have been teaching right now, uh, I have a, meditation group that meets at Sunbury Shores um, on uh, Tuesday mornings and Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. So it's a little early for some people. Uh, this is a seniors group that's meeting currently, so it's 50 plus. Um, we're looking at, you know, expanding that for people that, you know, are not seniors and, um, you know, also people that maybe don't want to get up that early. Um, and uh, so we are looking for another location where we will, um, you know, teach as well. But anybody that's interested in, in taking the seniors class, um, you know, contact Sunbury Shores and okay. uh, tell them you want to sign up. And we would love to have you. We have a great group that meets. You meet, come either Tuesday or Thursday. Um, so we have great groups that meet both, both times. And I know, you know, from they've shared their experiences and, and uh, you know, they've really found it beneficial. I've heard um, great things. Yeah. And we are taking it online as well. So, um, so how is that working? So, well, we had a technical glitch on Thursday. <laughs> so um, we're going to try again on um, uh, next week. So, um, Would that be through like a Zoom program or? Well, what we're Skype? doing, yeah, we're doing it through Facebook. Okay. So um, you need to go to the Facebook and uh, request to join the group. Um, so go to Sunbury Shores mm -hmm. and um, then uh, we're trying to do it like a teleconference right. so that everybody can participate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna see how that works. So yeah. You must still find though, especially with the self-isolating and all that. Mm -hmm. Obviously sometimes with meditation you seek being alone, but people right. might be overwhelmed right now. Um, and that's a hurdle to get over just in doing your group. But do you find there's more demand now that people are in this position of not just uncertainty, but feeling like they're not connected in their community, at least with the physical distance. Well, you know, it's interesting. I think with, with all, you know, we are, you know, with all the self-isolating that, you know, we're doing, um, it's, I, I like that you use the word overwhelmed mm -hmm. because I think it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, we're really lucky that we have the internet and it can keep us all connected. Uh, you know, I, I can't imagine, you know, what this would have been like, you know, 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Um, 
But on the other hand, it can also lead to a lot of anxiety for people, you know, because suddenly there's all this pressure to be online. There's all this pressure, you know, people have probably got more invitations to groups in the last week. <laughs> you know, I had a friend that said she'd been invited to more cocktail parties, online cocktail parties in the last <laughs> week than she'd been, been invited to real parties in the last year. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of um, pressure, I think, that comes with all this new, you know, internet, um, you know, working, uh, working with the internet, um, you know, people have children, mm -hmm. you know, at home now, and they're suddenly their kids are doing all their classes online, mm -hmm. and people are having to figure out how to use Zoom and other other programs. So there's a lot of anxiety as right. well that can come up around this, uh, you know, whether this new new home. technology. Yeah. I yeah. think I think it's like to get used to being a part of a generation that at five o'clock your day's not done because email comes right. home with you, right? So whether we're stuck at home or we're not, right. it sort of feels like it yeah. follows you around. So what is your best advice to people in terms of meditation? Is it something someone like me want to believe I can do once a day and I'm good? Or is it a mindfulness all day long that you stress? Well, you know, I think it's both. So um, you want to do, you know, if you want to start a mindfulness practice or a mindfulness meditation practice, then you want to pick a time when it's best that you can do it mm -hmm. um, and try to s stick to the same time every day. It's not always possible. Um, you know, different, you know, it depends on the challenges that you have. Um, but uh, consistency really helps develop a practice. And then, you know, it's not people often wonder, you know, what's the benefit of doing meditation, you know, um, does it really only help me for those five or 10 minutes a day that I do my, you know, my yeah. actual meditation, if that was just the case, um, you know, I wouldn't be here, you know, saying how amazing it is and how right. well it works, you know, because the point is that you're able to take that mindfulness, you're able to take that present moment awareness and bring it into all areas of your mm -hmm. life. You know, we can't compartmentalize like we tend to think we can. You know, everything bleeds into other areas, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, I mean, definitely, you know, if you want to start a practice, pick a place, mm -hmm. um, you know, where you think it's quiet, um, where hopefully you won't have a lot of distraction. Um, some people do it very early in the morning because that's the best time for them. Other people late at night. Mm -hmm. Some people are able to steal a little bit of time during the day. It really just, you know, it's up to you. It depends. A lot of great artists do it before they yes. perform. A lot of great athletes do it when they're trying to get ready for a gold medal performance. So. Well, it really brings you into the present moment, and I think that's the point. You know, we tend to be so, you know, we're always reacting. We're always looking out. You know, we're always interacting with the world. This is bringing ourselves inward mm -hmm. um, and just for a few minutes a day mm -hmm. and, you know, looking at our thoughts and feelings, you know, and sensations, you know, because the mind-body connection is very important to mindfulness mm -hmm. as well. And, um, and really giving yourself that bit of time mm -hmm. to, to, to heal, um, mm -hmm. to, you know, transform, to be with yourself. Mm. You know. It's hard for a lot of us to do in an age of iPhones when it you're is. constantly not alone with your own thoughts, right? It is, you know, and there's so many distractions, right? You know, I think there's always been distractions, but I think, you know, the last 20 years, you know, it's just gotten, you know, times, you know, 10, right? Mm. Um, and that's why mindfulness is really important. And I think mm. that's why meditation is really important. And I think there's a reason that it's suddenly such a buzzword, right. you know, um, in the 80s, it was all about exercise and, you know, going to the gym. And then the last 20 years, it's been about yoga. Mm -hmm. You know, I think this next century um, is the, the century of the mind, you know. Yeah. Meditation is really mind training. Right. Um, yeah, you talk about um, picking a time to try. Mm -hmm. Do you have a recommended amount of time that people, a minimum amount of time even people should do it? And what kind of rituals should you try to put around it, be it picking a place or a, a mode of quiet or lighting that people should think about before they sort of institute this into their daily lives? Yeah, you know, it's a great question because um, I, I would start with 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like to discourage people by making, you know, don't do the best you can. Mm -hmm. So it's really about sitting. Um, and it's not always easy in the beginning. It is, an e it is easy in a sense, mm -hmm. but sometimes it can be difficult to sit and just try to, you know, focus. I mean, when we do the meditation, you'll get a better idea of, of what I'm talking about. But, um, you know, it can be difficult for people to sit and just focus for a few minutes. So just, you know, give yourself a couple minutes, you know, I'd say 
10 minutes to start mm -hmm. to just sit. Um, and even if you do nothing else, mm -hmm. just, you know, just, you know, allow yourself to sit there for 10 minutes. Um, what do you find the benefits to be? And uh, what do your clients say the benefits are from having worked with you? Wow, you know, I think the benefits are, are many. You know, it's, there's, you know, improved, improved memory, there's improved, um, yeah, and I'm thinking because I work a lot with seniors, mm -hmm. um, you know, so p people talk a lot about, you know, improved memory, um, improved health, uh, you know, feeling more connected, um, feeling more comfortable with themselves, feeling more okay with, with life and things that are, are happening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, I mean, there's been so many studies now, you know, 30 years ago, if you told somebody that you were, you know, you meditated, people thought, you know, that you were kind of like, it was some esoteric, you know, mm -hmm. strange thing, you know, some people did, yeah, you know, very people, hippy -dippy yeah, very hippy dippy, you know, very like, you know, woo woo. Um, and uh, now when you tell people meditate, they're like, oh, I've tried that or, oh, you know, that really works for me. And there's so many studies now that back it up mm -hmm. um, and that really show, you know, the connection between meditation and the body, meditation mm -hmm. and, and mental health. Um, you know, really, you can't, it, it, the one thing I will promise you is that if you start and if you really just take that 10 minutes a day to do it, mm -hmm. it, will, it will, you will see some benefit. Right. I promise it. What are you finding from some of your clients right now? Are they coping with it because they have these skills or are they finding they needed additional meditation because of the climate we're dealing with of uncertainty right now and a lot of self-isolation? Well, you know, people that came to, you know, that come to the classes come with all sorts of different, you know, levels of experience. Some people have been meditating for years. Other people meditate in different ways. So, you know, um, the type of meditation that we do mindfulness is, is um, has no, you know, is, is for everybody. It doesn't, you don't have to have any kind of spiritual belief or, or to do it, but there are people that come with you know, they do Christian meditation, they do, you know, Buddhist meditation. So there, there's all kinds of different levels. Um, but, uh, and then there's a lot of beginners as well. So um, what they've seen happen um, is that, you know, the beginners have seen, you know, huge improvements in, you know, their feeling, their sense of self. Um, and people that have been meditating for a long time also feel like there's something about meditating in a group versus doing it individually, um, where you know you have the energy of the group, you can learn from each other, um, you know, hear different people's experiences. It's really you know encouraging um, when you're working with people. Do some people find it challenging to be in a group atmosphere? Do you work with people one on one too? I do work with people one on one, um, so you know that's something that I'm happy to do as well. Um, some people find it challenging to be in the group, but I think that goes away pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you know the the groups that I've been in have always been very supportive, um, very warm, very safe places. Um, you know, and I think everybody's welcome. So, uh, you know, I think we all come, you know, that first day with a lot of nerves, yeah. you know, and think like, oh, you know, I, I, is this for me? Is this going to be, am I going to be centered out? Is this going to be embarrassing? Um, you know, am I going to be able to do this? And uh, I think pretty quickly people realize that, that it's going to be a really positive experience. Yeah. It's a struggle to sort of get control of that internal monologue, right? I think I, I, I have a trouble with yoga even to say like, oh my gosh, everyone's judging you. You don't know what you're doing. Oh my it's, goodness, yeah. The it, meditation wraps your abilities around that to sort of turn that voice off is that one of the focuses oh absolutely you know um, that's something that you know that that internal dialogue that we all have <laughs> you know that that kind of like crazy person that's sitting on your shoulder you know whispering those things into your ear um, you know many of us you know deal with that and that's what meditation is really you know addressing you know because you are going inward mm -hmm. um, and you are listening to that voice because sometimes I think we see that voice as real mm -hmm. um, you know and we think of it as as um, reality um, and the truth is you know when we're able to look at it with non-judgmental awareness is when we realize that you know maybe that's just a voice <laughs> you know maybe that isn't <laughs> reality you know um, maybe there are other ways to to look at things maybe there are other ways to you know approach I'm very yeah. excited to, I think we should start soon doing okay. a, a trial of this meditation. I, ha, I know I'm the type of person that 
turns my TV on if I'm right. awake yeah. with my thoughts at night. So I, I'm curious to try it. I am nervous, yeah, try but I'll be doing it here with everyone at home, trying it out. So if, if you're worried, I'm here with you. This is my first time. Yeah. And we'll do it on television. Well, that's great. Well, we've got you covered. Okay. So it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I'm ready. So it's you should be sit fine. a certain way. Yeah. So okay. Um, with mindfulness meditation, we do it in a sitting position. Okay. Um, you know, there's all kinds of there's hundreds of mindfulness techniques. Um, you know, but um, the the great thing about mindfulness is it's usually done from sitting. Okay. And so it, it makes it accessible to anybody. So, you know, you don't have to sit on some mat or, you know, I've done meditation where I've been kneeling for, you know, you know, an hour at a time, you know, and that's all you can think about is yeah. the pain. So, um, yeah, so you want to be sitting. Okay. Um, so just pick a place where you're comfortable. All right. Um, and so, you know, something stable you know make sure <laughs> you know <laughs> if you can um, make sure you you know ground yourself to the the floor okay so um, if you're at home you could be cross-legged you could sit cross-legged yes. if you want to yes um, but uh, you know try to get your back straight if you can maybe put a cushion behind you um, but um, you can meditate something people ask me a lot is should they have their eyes open or closed okay. i um, meditate with my eyes like half closed okay. but most people usually close their eyes but it's totally up to you open closed doesn't matter um and uh and then you can just begin okay so start by taking three deep breaths through your nose And our third one, remember to relax your body with every exhale. Bring your attention to your breathing and gently rest it there. Even when noticing other things, such as the sounds in your environment, sensations in your body, and any other thoughts that may arise, always keep part of your attention on the breath. You can observe the sensations of the air coming in and out of the nostrils, or how breathing moves your chest or belly. Or you can count your breaths with every exhalation from 10 to one to help you stay present. You can stay with the breath or choose to take it further. To do this, you'll open your awareness to your environment, body, and mind. Always keep the breath as an anchor. Whatever is seen with non-judgmental awareness. Notice your environment when sounds come through your ears. You also notice if you create any reactions in you and accept those as well. Then notice any sensations in your body 
for example, pleasure or pain, hot or coldness, tension and relaxation. Finally, notice your mind. Your mind will produce thoughts. Be aware of the thoughts coming and going and don't latch on to them. Continue noticing everything without holding on to anything. Keep your breath as the anchor throughout your practice. When you are ready, Gently open your eyes and conclude the practice. I feel like I should have a nap now. I know. <laughs> well, it is that very relaxing. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, you don't realize how like tense you are. I mm. could, until you told me to really relax, I could feel my arms. I was like, wow, do I sit like that all the time? That's exactly kind of, it. You know, we don't yeah. notice, we don't uh, notice how tense we are. Yeah, we're not often very aware of what actually is going on inside our head and what's going on inside our body. Um, and just by sitting for those five or ten minutes, mm -hmm. you know, you would, you know, we did it, you know, a little shorter, you know, for, for television. Um, but of course, you know, you could take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. You know, you could pause, you know, more. Um, and really pay attention to what's going on. Wow, uh, that's yeah. in, it's, I feel like the Tin Man and I've just had oil. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's a great, Who knew? that's a great analogy, I really like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it a, really does, yeah. you realize how much you're not paying attention to right. yourself. Yeah. You know? And that's, you know, and we go through our day like that, you know, mm -hmm. um, completely unaware, completely, you know, most of us, mm -hmm. you know, completely unaware, completely not paying attention to, you know, checking in with ourselves and really, yeah. you know, we're reacting all the time and we're not really, you know, asking ourselves, how am I feeling? What am I, you know, what am I uh, going through right now? Yeah. So, you it's know, it's nice to feel connected you... to my breath in a positive way mm. during this time. I feel yeah. like we've been so scared about what we're breathing in and it just let me enjoy being human. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you for being my guest today. Thank you, Vicki. It's been a great experience. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. Southwest Magazine is a news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.